one of the things that kind of struck me about Lovin was just, I suppose, how understated and how underplayed it was. Um, and I, that kind of fed into every aspect of it. I'm assuming Jeff, I mean, that was his specific direction on his part, yeah? I, I think that we'd spent a good two or three weeks beforehand, like, prepping, and Jeff doesn't rehearse, so he didn't rehearse. But I think that um, myself and J uh, Joel Edgerton, who's mm -hmm. fantastic in it, we sort of lived with this, with this script for a very long time, and this couple, because we were lucky enough to have access to a documentary yeah. that was made by one of the producers of our film, Nancy. And I think we instinctively, wordlessly knew that this couple had a radiance that um, didn't necessarily rely on, on verbal communication yeah. um, with each other or the audience. And I think that, that they were sort of all the more powerful for it and that we thought that our film could be all the more powerful for that. And so um, for, for Joel and I as actors, I think I can speak for him and say it was a really beautiful challenge to have, gift to have that challenge to sort of um, really investigate how people communicate in other ways than verbally and how um, a script can be written that f doesn't get in the way of, of communication. Because I yeah. think sometimes, you know, lesser directors than Jeff, sometimes <laughs> when you, they get nervous, they, you, it's the tendency to put in words. And I think, you know, we do it in real life. When we yeah. get nervous, we, you know, we fill space. Um, so I think it, it was a, a very conscious decision, but it wasn't one that was necessarily talked about a lot. Yeah. Um, in terms of, you know, the, I suppose the character itself, and you're saying that, you know, a lot of it was to do with the fact of, you know, finding that connection with the script, and it being so terse and so on and so forth. but. I mean, where does the process start for you? I mean, is it finding the accent? Is it putting on the clothes? Is it reading? Like, was it watching the documentary that it said, right, I've got it now, I know what this character is? Or was there any one specific point? Mm, that's a really good question. Um, I think for every different character um, or role I take on, uh, it's, it's sort of starting anew and afresh and thinking, I'm not sure where my sort of access is for this yeah. one. Um, so a lot of the time, you know, sometimes I think nothing beats having a good old think. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's sort of a meditation on them and th seeing, you know, is this a physical way in or f initially or is yeah. it like some something else? And, you know, it's a, obviously it's sort of this lovely mixture of everything. But um, for Mildred, it was very much having access to the documentary footage, yeah. studying her uh, physically and the accent and um, seeing like in front of the mirror, makeup mirror, seeing that person, you become that person, yeah, you it gives it, you yeah. confidence. Yeah. Um, but I think what we really wanted to do was absorb their spirits really, yeah. essentially. But I think that, I'm not sure in what kind of um, stage that happened. Hmm. Sometimes you have to just just guess what the recipe is and yeah. just hope it happens and hope that when you turn up and set and act when you know the director's action you've done enough work that something magical happens that you're not forcing you can feel you're it channeling like, yeah yeah does it i mean did he uh, just in terms of with joel or anything like that i mean for him i mean the relationship between the two is you were saying that you didn't um you didn't do a lot of rehearsal i mean did he give you any kind of I mean, was there any anything specific that he gave to you as in like, you know, right, let's, I don't know, move into a house for a week and just see what happens? Was there anything like that? Or was it more a case of, let's just do it on set and find our way? No, I think, I think, I think that uh, Jeff, Jeff trusted us enough because he'd worked with us and he spent time with me to, to sort of, mm, uh, first to find it, you know, yeah. um, and I really respected that. It was lovely. And I wouldn't say... It would work with every film and every actor. It just worked with worked this, this, you know. Yeah. Um, and the thing about uh, Jeff, he's a very kind, caring director. And, and and working with Joel, he's such a lovely human being and a very supportive actor. And I think I could speak for both of us. We knew that we were doing something very special and playing two very very special people. And so I think we just innately knew that 
we were going to support one another throughout this. And yeah. I think that that's what they did. <laughs> yeah, that was it. That it was mean? understated yeah. and just the game yeah. show. Okay, right. I'm going to put you on the spot. Top five favorite films. Okay, I, this, said it, I did say I was going to do this. This, ch this does change because, you know, sometimes you're thinking, you're like, no, that's moved out. So I have, yeah. um, okay, Do the Right Thing, Spike Lee, nice. Lion, Machiko Savitz, All About Eve. Yeah. Um, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Um, um, Crying Game. Really? Yeah, I love that film. Okay, yeah. Um, what else? Was that because of Breakfast on Pluto? Like, is it, you just saying that because like Breakfast on Pluto? No, just I just film? remember that was such an inc incredible film. I, I'd never seen anything like. It. Most people had never yeah. seen anything. Like, not even just people my age. And I just remember watching, and I watched it again recently, and I just think it's really astounding. It is, isn't it? Like, it just, I just am quite blown away by it. Um, Number one. Oh my gosh, number one. Oh, it doesn't even have to be in order. I mean, just... Loving by Jeff Nichols. Have you seen it? Oh, well, I mean, of course, obviously. I mean, it's such a great film. <laughs> That's brilliant. Ruth Negger, thanks for Thank you so much. Thank you.